All right, welcome to our call. Tonight is Sunday, September 27th. Um, we are going to have Kat on, um, host our call tonight, and she's going to talk about um, building a kick-butt team based on a webinar that was um, given and hosted last week. So, um, But first, I just wanted to shout, or start with some shout-outs. We had three rank advancements last week. Um, Deb Davis is our new Emerald coach. Tammy Bowie and Melanie Gregorich. So congratulations, coaches. It was awesome. Um, two of those coaches were in a 10-day Push to Emerald group, which was awesome. Um, you guys did what it took and made it happen. And a lot of other people in that group are sitting at one coach. So um, you did move your business forward in those 10 days. One more person. Um, get out there and make it happen. All right. Um, we still have a few days left in the month. Um, we are looking pretty uh, hurting in the success club department for our team. We normally have way more coaches who are in success club by this point in the game. So I did want to recognize those coaches who have already hit it. Um, Leah Brownell is the top earner so far this month at 12 points. Um, Allison is close behind at 8. And Tammy, brand new coach, first month in the business at 8 success club points this month. Um, and I think she said she has one more person, so probably it'll be 10. Um, my husband, Adam, is at six, uh, Landon is at six, Amber is at six, and Brooke is at six. And a whole lot of people are sitting at four and Success Club two. So one or two more people to make it happen for you this month. Benefits of Success Club, not to drill this into the ground, are that you'll get customer leads for next month. Um, you're also just growing your business, and you want to earn that team cycle bonus. Um, you know, you just, it's a, a milestone for you to hit every month, the goal that should be non-negotiable if you're building a business. Um, so ways to achieve success club. If you're looking, if you're working towards that, making it happen, um, different ideas that you can toss around and try, um, you know, in these last remaining days of the month. Go back and see who had a birthday this month. And you can offer them some kind of birthday gift or incentive um, for it being, you know, having a September birthday. Um, maybe you offer them, one of the sale items for free for ten dollars you can give them a ten dollar gift card for pio or the three-day refresh when they try shakeology or maybe you give them a twenty dollar gift card um, you're going to get forty to fifty dollars commission back on a challenge pack so if you're willing to give some of that commission back to them um, you're still going to benefit from earning success club which is going to move your business forward next month so um, you can also offer your own flash sale um, just keep in mind you never want to post like a stock Beachbody image on your timeline. It's way too salesy. It's not going to make people stop scrolling. Um, what's way more effective is if, they, if you have a picture of yourself maybe doing a PIO workout or using the three-day refresh or your own personal results from the three-day refresh or if there's another coach on the team who's willing to share their results. Um, just a before and after photo, something like that and personalize it is going to make them stop scrolling through their news feed and have them read the post. Um, it's literally $10 for PIO or for a three-day refresh with the Challenge Pack promo this month. So if you're willing, again, to give away some of that commission that you're going to earn through that sale, give that back to your customer. And, um, you know, maybe that, if they're on the fence with trying it, maybe that'll just be enough to get them into a group and you can start helping them um, achieve their goals for the month. You can give any of your current customers, if you have uh, current happy customers in your Open Door Revolving group, um, or even if they're, they, they were never in a challenge group, maybe you private message them and say, you know, do you have anyone who would be, um, you know, interested in joining into my next accountability group? I have two spots remaining. Um, I'm really looking to fill this group. If you have anyone in mind who you think might do this um, and they decide to do it, I'm willing to give you some of that commission back in the form of a gift card. And then you can set the dollar amount. So that would be another way, just private message um, asking for referrals. Get on the phone. Um, this is literally how I have been able to achieve Success Club this month. I went back through my WooFoo applications, which is another great reason to use a WooFoo application form. So I went through, it's a running log of anyone who applies for either a challenge group or a coaching position on your team. I went through and I literally picked up the phone and called people, anyone who hadn't committed, um, and talked to them and asked them if they were still interested, invited them to my coach opportunity call, gave them information, sent them a YouTube recording on coaching opportunity if that's what they wanted. Um, but I've been recruiting and most of my successful points are from coaches this month. Um, so going back, um, doing any follow-ups, 
invite to the coaching opportunity. If you're only inviting into the, your challenge groups, you're missing out on 50% of your business or potentially 50% of your leads. Um, people need to know about the business opportunity too and how awesome it can be. So don't ever not invite to the coaching opportunity. You're, you're basically limiting your, your potential by not sharing that as well. So do both. Um, that's why I'm hosting calls every week. Thursday nights, 8 p.m., you can count on that. Um, invite to that every week. Um, think about the jab, jab, right hook method. Um, that's a book, and it's actually a really good personal development book if you're looking for just some help with knowing like what to post or how to post. Um, basically, the premise is the jabs are your content, your value, um, kind of things leading up to what you are working for. So for example, let's say um, I'm going to start a clean eating crock pot group, which I do intend to do one of these weeks. So the week leading up to that, I'm going to be doing my research. I'm going to be looking on Pinterest. I'm going to be getting together all of my content for my group. So in that week, I'm going to be sharing what I'm finding. So different crock pot recipes that I'm going to be sharing in my group. Um, posting those on my timeline and then mentioning in that post that this is, you know, I'm getting ready for my group, my upcoming group. This is one of the recipes I found I'm going to be sharing. I'm so excited. You know, so you're building up and leading up. So it's kind of like your marketing plan for your business. Um, let's say you're going to run a 21 day fix group. Same thing. Get fixate the cookbook so that you have those recipes to share in your timeline. Um, talk about the workouts. Talk about the meal plan. Um, maybe put together a really awesome picture of a meal that you created using the containers and then you can um, put the containers around your plate to show people that it is a lot of food, you know, so that if they're, you know, think of what their objection might be, you know, they don't want to eat out of some small container and be told that they can only eat this amount. That's probably what people are thinking, right? But they don't really understand because they don't use the program or have it that it's a lot of food <laughs> until you have it and really, you know, work with it. So you're going to educate them through that post and help them see that you're not really limiting yourself, you know, all that much or as much as they might think you are. Um, and then your right hook is your invite. So the jabs are you giving really good content, um, kind of leading up, and then that way when the right hook, when your invite comes, it'll be easier for them to, because they'll have the background knowledge, they'll have seen your posts, hopefully, um, so they might be more open to um, joining your group. Um, one mistake a lot of people make is if you're not inviting, let's say you're only doing your jab jabs, you're posting your sweaty workouts, you're talking about your programs, you're, you're showing your food, you're talking about Shakeology, and you're not inviting, people don't know you're a coach. They're gonna go on the Beachbody website and they're gonna order it themselves and you're gonna miss out. I've seen it happen a million times, guys. You have to be inviting and sharing with people what we do to help them because you're gonna do a really good job of motivating them to get their butt moving and they're going to find it somewhere else or they're going to go with a coach who does invite them. So, you know, you have to be doing your, your inviting also. All right. Um, the other thing that I've been doing is boosting my posts. Um, so that's what the really great thing about having a like page is. It's a really cheap way for you to get your content out there. Um, you know, for $5 a day, you can boost a post. Um, but you've got to build up your like page first. So it's not going to do you a whole lot of good to be paying Facebook to boost a post if you only have 50 likes or if you only have 150 likes even. So really work on good, good content if you're just starting out your like page and really work hard to get it up to 500 likes to 1,000 likes. And then from there, hopefully it'll continue to grow organically. Um, but you can do a lot for free likes. So, you know, I don't know, I talked to you, Kat, about, um, you know, putting a really good, like, enticing picture of a meal together on your timeline and ask people to like your page and share your post so that way, you know, if, if they want the recipe. So you're making them work for your likes, okay? Work for the recipe. Um, I did that a lot when I first started because I had a lot of people follow me for my recipes. And I stopped just giving them away on my timeline. I'm like, you know what? I got to get my likes up. So I got smart. <laughs> and I wouldn't give people my recipe until they, I made them work for it. So um, that's a really good way to just get your likes going. Okay. All right. From this point, I'm going to hand it over to you, Kat. 
I think I need to stop my share. Okay, now you should be able to share your screen. <laughs> Yay, thank you, ma'am. Yep. All right. Share screen. Can you see that? Yes, thank you. Awesome. All right, so this past Tuesday, uh, what, there was a webinar regarding on um, this regarding the secrets of how to build your team through social media and um, three of the top coaches in Beachbody was a part of it um, <clears throat> pardon me um, Hillary Kelly was a big part of it she wasn't able to be there at the time because uh, she was ill that night but she did take part in um, making a lot of the content in the webinar. There was Deborah Baska and Chrissy Taylor uh, Sherwanka, all of which were either uh, 15 diamond or 10 diamond. And I think um, Deborah Baska actually was the number two coach last year, if I remember right. So let's go ahead and get this rolling. First and foremost, work smarter, not harder. And by that, they mean um, do things that uh, can be duplicated. Do something that um, do something that. Oh, geez, <sighs> sorry. Um, that can be replicated and change your mindset, change your mindset about what's going on. Cause as, for, as soon as you change your mindset to a positive, as soon as you start working smarter instead of harder, you get better results. Okay. The anatomy of a successful lead generation system. Um, in the webinar, they went over 10 must haves in your plan. Um, I was only able to get three because they skimmed over the last seven really fast. But um, I think there's still three really big parts of it to begin with anyway. Um, these parts are your niche, your brand, and your content. And what's your niche? Um, your niche is basically your target market. Who or what is your perfect customer or client? Target who you're after and you won't have to invest in much in marketing to get results. Basically what that means is if you are more focused on your target market, then the work will basically do itself. And, um, your target market as defined by Wikipedia is a group of customers towards which a business has decided to aim its marketing efforts and ultimately its merchandise. So what's your target market? What's your niche? Prospect those who are like you, those who you have something in common with, who you can strike up a conversation with. Like, for example, I happen to love Doctor Who. I'm a huge Whovian. And it would be so easy for me to strike up a conversation with a fellow fan than it would, say, some random person at the grocery store. And then that can lead into, hey, have you thought about this? So prospecting and targeting those who are like you it really helps it really makes it a lot easier and it makes it flow a lot more naturally niche game changers prospecting with pinpoint accuracy now what this means is just like i said earlier market to those and prospect those who are like you get your top five um interests or likes and write them down 
that is going to be most likely what your niche is. Like I have my photography, I have Dr. Who, I'm a volunteer. I can put all of that into um, my niche and prospect to those who do the same. Uh, Facebook ad accuracy and low cost. So like Marcia said earlier, um, the best part about having a like page is that you can boost ads and you can make ads and boost different posts. Um, a good part of that is you can customize your ad and your boost to a certain niche, a certain person, and you can even exclude different people. Like for example, say I posted something on, oh, I'm starting a challenge group today. If I boost that, I can say, okay, we're going to target these people that are this age to that age. They live in this country and their interests include the following photography, doctor who volunteering, yada, yada, so on and so forth and excludes those who are already fans. Now what that does is it shows off your post to all these other people who had no idea who you were beforehand and exposes you to your niche market. You can do it at a low cost. You can do it as low as four cents a like, a dollar a day, and you can still get likes. That's what I've been doing, and I've been getting steady likes for days. So that's a good thing to think about. Content it has to be quality and genuine. It has to show who you are. Don't, don't, how do I put this? Don't BS it. <laughs> don't, don't put something up that's not genuinely you because they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out. People are smart. People are smart enough to know that when you are BSing it, they'll, they'll figure it out and they'll be like, oh, she's fake or, oh, he's not worth my time. If you're genuine in your content and if you show who you are, that um, will make you more valuable and more credible. Um, most importantly, don't try to be all things to all people. Trying to please everyone doesn't work in real life and it doesn't work in business marketing. That's why you have to uh, target your niche. Create quality, genuine content aimed at your niche, which is meant to serve your niche. So if you're going to make content, make sure that it serves a purpose for your niche. Like my Doctor Who obsession. If I was going to say, put up a post, yay, I lost this, many, this much weight and this many pounds, I would say something like, so the adipose ran away and I'm down this many pounds. And the reason why I'd say that is because in a certain episode, adipose is featured and a Doctor Who, um, a Doctor Who fan would get that. And they'd be like, oh, cool, I want to be a part of that. And um, a last one, don't be afraid of disple displeasing others. Not everybody is going to like seeing a sweaty picture of you. And if that's the case, fine. It doesn't matter if everyone doesn't relate to me and my business, but my niche will. Now, Deborah Baskis said that, and she couldn't be more right. Because so long as you are appealing to your niche, to your target market, you're golden. Your brand. Your brand is what guides your every action and decision in service to your niche. A brand, as defined by Wikipedia, is an intangible asset 
and is often the most valuable asset on a company's balance sheet. What a brand um, will answer is a lead's most pressing question. What's in it for me? Your brand is how you market yourself through your content. Your brand will show people who you are. Your brand will um, guide you into making your content so that it serves your niche, so it serves your target market best. And if you make your content and you brand yourself so that you can serve your target market, the question, what's in it for me, it'll get answered. So who are you? What makes you special? What makes you different? Be ready to share the less attractive parts of you. Those are things that people are going to relate to. Be real, genuine. Be unapologetically yourself. Not everyone is going to love seeing sweaty workout pics, like I said, or photos of your food, and that's okay. This is a collage that I threw together of different aspects of myself. As you can see in the top right hand corner, that's me in a blue dress. And that's actually, I was cosplaying the TARDIS from Doctor Who. That's a huge part of me. Right below that, I'm at uh, the Bristol Renaissance Fair. That's right on the Wisconsin Illinois border. I love Ren Fair. I'm a huge Ren. Love it. Go every year. Below that, um, I am a volunteer and I'm also an artist. I volunteer for the National Alliance of Mental Illness with their um, art shows in Racine County. And I am also an artist. I'm a photographer. I love to draw and I love to paint. Those are all big parts of myself. Now, the next picture, the one to the left, middle left, um, that's where it gets less attractive. Um, I have dealt with depression. I have dealt with, and I know this is a very heavy subject, but I've dealt with suicide. I've dealt with mental illness. This is a part of me. This is also something that I can use to market to others, to say, hey, I've been there and this is how I'm getting out. I can use it and I can throw it in there so that they know I'm not just another pretty face on online. I'm not some model that they hired. I'm a real human being. I have real issues just like everybody else. Um, the last one to the far left, um, that is the color run. <laughs> um, I have participated in the color run 5K walk and run two years in a row now, and I love it. I love doing it, and um, those are all parts of me. Those are all what make me unique, what make me different, and I can use that when creating content. I can use that when branding myself. I can use that when uh, finding out what my niche market is, and so can you. I'm actually... I'm uh, going to give you an assignment right now. Five things that make you you. Write them down, and that I guarantee you that'll be your niche market. Your content. As the wise Bill Gates once said in 1996, content is king. 70% of marketers lack a consistent or integrated content strategy. What this means is 7 out of 10 people out there are not being consistent 
with what they're doing, with their content, with their brand. Consistency, consistency, consistency. That will get you where you need to go. Content relevance and effectiveness. Audience relevance. How is it relevant to your niche market? How is your content and uh, uh, relevant to those who are seeing it? Is it engaging? Is there compelling story storytelling? And lastly, what are the triggers or the response or call to action? What is there that makes them want to take the next step? These are all major parts of the, your content and how you can use it to um, better serve your niche market. 53% of consumers are more likely to buy something if they find the product through online content. So if you make quality content, you are adding value to yourself, to your brand, and to your business. One major thing that um, I want to say it was Chrissy that said it, video, video, video. Video, they see that you're a real person. They hear the uh, genuine passion that you have for what you're doing. And as long as you keep it short and sweet, quality over quantity, that'll be what gets it. And before we move on, Beachbody is not your brand. I forgot to mention that before. Beachbody is not your brand. Beachbody is a tool to better serve your brand, to better serve your niche. So instead of saying, well, I'm a Beachbody coach, then they automatically associate you with something that although you do do it that's not necessarily all that you are and then they'll assume that that is all that you are like on my page i say that i'm a health and wellness coach i don't put beach body on there until after until you get to the timeline and that's only to say, hey, I just did the 21-day fix. Hey, I just did that. Once they get into the challenge, once then, then there's bringing light to Beachbody and how amazing it is, and it is. Beachbody is wonderful, but you are not Beachbody. You are you, and you need to sell you. What is content? Um, content represents your first and lasting impressions. It builds your credibility, it creates desire, and it reduces risk. Content includes text, images, video, offers, and reviews. Now, what do I mean by reviews? I mean that, um, say you have a client, they just finished a challenge, group with you and they're like oh my gosh i had such amazing results it's awesome i love working with you ask them if you can screenshot it and use it uh, as content for your next post and make sure that you have per their permission you can screenshot it and then you have an outside source telling your potential clients hey, this is legit, she's awesome, or he's amazing, then you're not just tooting your own horn. You have a credible uh, word backing how awesome you are. Because we already know you're awesome. But once you have p other people saying that you're awesome is when you're going to be able to build that credibility. Creating content. Um, ask why when you're creating content. Why would you want to read this? Why would you want to view this video? 
that's a big part of it. Whenever I create content, especially um, with my food, well, that's a big part for me is I will photograph my food and it has to be just right or else I hate it. Because I know if it's just a bland random picture, nobody's going to want to see that. No. You have to create quality content that you would want to view. If it doesn't pass your sniff test, it's probably not going to catch much attention. So make sure that whatever you create, it's quality. Getting started with uh, content planning. Um, think of the five top ways your brand benefits your niche. What is it? What are the top five things about you that would benefit your target market? Uh, think about the top five objections that you receive from your niche. What would they, how would they object? Why would they object? And once you have the answers to those five objections, you're pretty much golden. And then think about the unmet emotional needs of your niche. Like I said before, I have dealt with depression and mental illness. That's something that I can use, that I can market toward, and I can go to a group, make friends with some people who are dealing with the same issues that I am, use the form method to get to know them, and be like, hey, I've been using this to really help with my depression and anxiety, and I think it would be great for you to at least give it a try, yada, yada, yada. Or... Um, when you're creating content on your wall. Um, there was one example of a uh, officer, a full-time officer who had Beachbody as a side job, as a side part-time business. And one of his, um, one of his posts said that, uh, we will work together to make sure we get you home safe to your family. That right there hits it right home. What police officer isn't, what police officer and what family of an officer isn't afraid they might not come home that night or that they might get that phone call saying that they were shot in the line of duty? Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants. Oh, I'm starting to get emotional, God. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody wants to have to deal with that kind of turmoil, that kind of tragedy. So to say that in their content will make sure to keep get you home at night to your family. That is meeting this otherwise unmet emotional need. And we as human beings, everything is motion. Aside from food, shelter, and water, everything else is based on emotion. So you just have to figure out what that unmet emotional need is for your niche and exploit it. I know exploit has negative connotations to it, but... <laughs> Think about that unmet emotional need and use it to your advantage. All right, strategies for getting ahead in far less time. Spend time at the beginning. I know a lot of us, myself especially, we're starting our business, we're wanting to get high up there real fast right now slow down make sure to put in the time now so that later 
you're not having to worry about it. You're not having to double question yourself. You're not looking back in two and a half months and saying, well, why haven't I had any growth in my business? It's because you need to spend time now to make sure that you have the success later. Devote part of your power hour to reviewing the basics. And really this can be for anybody, not just those who uh, are just starting out. Reviewing the basics is uh, really essential for any, any business, especially one where social marketing is a huge part of it. Like um, review the form, review the different uh, training programs that are in your back office. Review um, the different uh, videos that are out there. Make sure that that is a part of your power hour, and if not about a, a part of your power hour, then a part of your personal development. Reviewing the basics is what's going to keep you from tripping over yourself and making a huge mistake later. Brand consistency. Be consistent with who you are and who you are displaying yourself to be. Um, what I have done on my page is I enjoy working out. I, I love food. <laughs> I love food. <laughs> And um, that is what is through a lot of my personal page as well as my like page. Speaking of personal pages, do not do business on your personal page. That's what like pages are for. Facebook has been going on and going on around and um, disabling pages of different coaches not like pages but personal pages of different coaches because they are doing business through their personal page and stuff through their like page like those are set up to do don't make that mistake yes share some of your content through your personal page that's how you're going to get more people to your like page but don't post a sale on your personal page. Don't post a percentage off sale or something like that or a flash sale on your personal page. Do that all on your like page. You won't get in trouble for it. You won't get your personal page torn down and everybody's happy. Questions, comments, concerns. Makes me sad because no one else is on here. But if anybody else does have questions, comments, or concerns after viewing this video, um, be sure to either send a message to me or Marsha Smirka, and one of us will be able to answer your questions. The end. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kat. I appreciate it.